Year three, we focused on what we called practical knowledge, which actually encompassed what we called vernacular natural history, practical optics, perspective, and mechanics. So what does that mean? Well, it means that the author practitioner took a very practical approach to what we could call natural history. He collected plants for dyes. He preserved flowers um, by burying them in sand. And they really kept their color and their shape remarkably. And the other really extraordinary thing about preservation of the flowers is that the petals themselves are quite flexible. They actually feel almost like fabric. And they, they're not brittle as we expected them to be. So it seems to be an extremely effective way of preserving plants. So that's what we mean by vernacular natural history. He's also interested in preserving animals. We had a taxidermist help us with the recipe. And the author practitioner, again, says, you know, this is a practical recipe. But he says, take a small cat, and you can put wings or horns or anything you like. This is a kind of typical product of a Kunstkammer, a monster which combines animals by human artifice. We also had students work on a practical mechanical recipe. This is a spinet that plays by itself. This is a prototype of the little sketch that the author practitioner provides for the reader, and or maybe for himself. Um, it seems more like a kind of aid de memoir. We need the um, clock spring that's supposed to run it to make it run by itself. And then another student worked on black sulfured wax. And black sulfured wax is a very interesting method of making wax pigmented with charcoal dust, which was not uncommon. Wax was used quite extensively for casting, for making models, for sculpture, and so on. It was always pigmented, either red or black, as far as we know. Anyway, this is a recipe for that. And um, in the process, the student produced uh, s what the author practitioner calls sulfur past wax. It's the kind of thing that the author practitioner takes one material and really changes its properties. So what this is is beeswax, the whitest kind of beeswax, which has chunks of sulfur passed through it. So the chunks of sulfur fall to the bottom, then the wax is poured off, and it creates a remarkably, it takes the, a remarkably flexible wax. So what he's doing in an example like this is taking wax, which does not show detail well, he colors it, but he also changes the actual handling properties of wax by passing sulfur through it. We also worked on practical medical recipes. So there are not too many medical recipes, around 40 medical recipes in the manuscript, mainly very practical against gout to preserve oneself from the plague, a remedy for gonorrhea. He is interested in really practical therapeutic and one of them is for cleaning teeth. And he cleans teeth, he says, with aquafortis, nitric acid. But he says, this will ch turn your teeth black. And he says, the best way to clean your teeth is to mix clove oil, honey, sulfuric acid, paint it on the teeth, and then rinse your mouth out several times. So we have tried it on some human baby teeth that were given to us, <laughs> given to the lab for the purposes of scientific research. And in fact, we tried washing with water. We tried washing with pure sulfuric acid, or not pure, but 15% um, sulfuric acid. We tried the author practitioner's method of clove oil and honey. And in fact, the clove oil and honey does clean the teeth very well. Uh, that is clove oil, honey, and sulfuric acid then rinsed out. So we have two other um, medical recipes here, or practical recipes. One is a salve for burns. This is a very interesting recipe, unusual because it contains clear religious references or devotional references in it. Um, you make this by taking the purest wax, um, taking holy water, um, taking new linseed oil, and you mix them together. It actually comes out a quite un it, very unexpected, very white salve. As you are washing the linseed oil wax mixture in the holy water, 
Uh, we did not use holy water, although you can buy it on Amazon. You're supposed to recite paternosters, so the Our Father prayer. So we had somebody reciting paternosters in the order that the author practitioner specifies, which is nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And in fact, it got wider and wider and purer and purer as we mixed the water with it. Um, then we have one other medical recipe. This is a plaster. You make the plaster out of many different kinds of plants and leaves and larch balsam, the resin from the larch tree called Venice turpentine. You heat it together, soak bread with it, and then you are supposed to, according to the author practitioner's recipe, apply it to breasts which have grown too large. We, of course, did not do that part of the recipe. It's a very aromatic result. Now, this recipe, we don't know. Is it for a reduction of the size of breasts? Is it for placing on a nursing mother's breasts whose breasts have become inflamed? We do know that there are other recipes that are similar to these, both similar to the burn salve, similar to the teeth recipe, um, and also similar to plasters, plasters of all kinds. There are many, many more ways in which we could approach uh, this vernacular practical knowledge component of the manuscript, and we hope to explore that further in coming years.